His Excellency Dato Seri Mohammed Nazri Abdulaziz uh, is the ambassador of Malaysia to the United States of America. Uh, he's the 17th ambassador of Malaysia uh, to the United States. Uh, he's a very seasoned politician. Uh, he's held various cabinet posts uh, in his more than 28 years of politics. Uh, some of his specialties include governance, uh, human rights, uh, and constitutional rights. Uh, when he was younger, uh, in 1978, he became a member of the United Malay National Organization, the UMNO political party. Um, he traveled extensively um, as a member of the Youth Executive Committee of the International Affairs Bureau of UMNO. Um, he ch also chaired the National Youth Wing of the National Front, Barça Nacional uh, co Coalition, from 1990 to 1994, and he was appointed an UMNO Supreme Council member, where he served until 2018. He has a distinguished record uh, in law um, and in politics in a number of ways. Um, he was educated in the United Kingdom. Uh, he founded his own uh, law firm. Um, he uh, helmed legal-related and national security-related departments. Um, as part of the Prime Minister's cabinet from 2004 to 2013. Um, he was in charge of the Attorney General's Chamber, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, uh, the Prime Minister's Department of Legal Affairs, Parliamentary Affairs, uh, Legal Aid Department, the National Security Council, uh, and the Public Service Department, uh, among many other portfolios. Uh, he has served as Parliament Deputy Whip in Malaysia, uh, he held the chair of the Interparliament Union, uh, the Malaysian chapter of that, for 16 years, uh, and has served in various parliamentary select committees, especially human rights and constitutional rights. Uh, he has served under three prime ministers of Malaysia from 1995 to 2018, uh, becoming one of the most senior ministers in the prime minister's uh, cabinet. He also served as the deputy minister of finance and a deputy directly in the Prime Minister's Department. Uh, in 2013, he shifted um, his portfolio and was tasked to promote uh, touris tourism and culture in Malaysia. Um, and uh, at least since that time, uh, there's been a great uptick in uh, people visiting Malaysia. So I think you did something right. Uh, uh, we're really excited also that uh, Ambassador Nazri uh, has his family here with him. So Hafflin and his uh, wife Hafflin and his uh, son Jean-Pierre. Jean-Pierre, would you like to stand up and say hello? Uh, just wave. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> welcome to BYU, Jean-Pierre. Uh, we're really delighted that you're here. Uh, we will hear uh, the ambassador's remarks. Uh, he'll take uh, somewhere around 30 minutes at which point we will uh, open it up to discussion uh, and we invite you to ask questions. Um, and, uh, you know, he, uh, the ambassador is a delightful individual. Uh, he's uh, interested in having an open conversation on any issues that are on your mind. Uh, and we will end uh, at about uh, 10 minutes before 12. Uh, please join me in welcoming Ambassador Nazri. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I couldn't have said it better than what you uh, just said just now. Well, um, first, before I commence my speech, um, I want you to know that I'm dressed in my country's national dress, in case you think I'm from Mars or something like that. <laughs> so this is our national dress. Uh, with the headgear, uh, this called the Nehru's cap. Uh, the former Prime Minister of uh, India, the late Nehru, uh, it was his uh, very uh, famous uh, cap that he wore when he was Prime Minister. So we, uh, because in our country we are multiracial, we have uh, uh, Chinese Indian and the natives. I'm a native. 
So we uh, adopted uh, the uh, the cap of the uh, Indian Prime Minister, and this is what I'm wearing now. It's in black. Yeah? And of course, this is uh, what we call uh, the Malay dress. It is uh, actually a Mandarin uh, coat, uh, Mandarin uh, collar, and uh, this is actually Indian uh, in India. So because we are multiracial and uh, our custom have uh, intertwined, and uh, in 57, uh, we introduced the national dress, and uh, it is what uh, I'm wearing now. The only native about me is myself. <laughs> Otherwise, we are everything else. We are Indian, we are Chinese, and all that. And uh, I'm, I'm very excited uh, to be here uh, this morning. Uh, I'm used to talking to um, students. In a way, I'm what uh, you call me, uh, avancula, uh, because I'm very friendly, and you know, I really take interest uh, in the younger people. Yeah? Uh, I love uh, younger people. I used to be uh, in the youth before in my political movement, and I understand how, uh, how we feel as a young person. So uh, that is why when, you know, when, I, when I was young, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the leaders, the older people uh, who attended to me, who gave me attention, I rem you know, I've remembered them until now. So that is why when now I'm growing older, uh, I take interest in, uh, you know, in young people, the youth, and I've come to this university, and uh, I'm so excited to see many young people uh, who are in front of me, who have interest in uh, you know, uh, doing missionary work, uh, coming uh, from university as uh, known as BYU, and that uh, you have interest. Uh, to, to, to do missionary work, which is uh, very much needed in a world where we are facing uh, so many things. The world needs compassion. The world needs uh, 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 friendliness, uh, understanding. Uh, we, we need it badly now. Uh, I, I'm more, in a way, I have already stopped uh, reading a lot of newspapers because to me, you know, it's doom and gloom, uh, reading uh, people with a self-interest, hatred to, to, towards each other just because we are different in uh, religion, in our faith. Uh, this is something, uh, you know, we have to work hard to stop. And I think BYU is doing a good job in promoting uh, compassion, uh, understanding, uh, being warm and friendly. And that is why uh, I feel uh, I'm very uh, glad that I'm here because I'm talking to people whom I feel uh, they are the future of, of this uh, world. And uh, I believe actually in what uh, BYU is doing uh, for, for the younger people and actually for uh, people of the world by going all over the world and you know, servicing them, doing missionary work, and uh, promote uh, peace, um, fairness, understanding, compassion, and warmth. So thank you for having me uh, this morning. Uh, I have a speech in front of me because I, I just want to say, I, I repeat this many times. Um, as mentioned by uh, the speaker earlier, that uh, you know I, I was a politician. So... Those days when I was a politician, uh, you know, uh, it, it's more than 30 years. So the, the, the sad thing about me is that I'm, uh, I'm my profession as a lawyer and also as a politician, uh, because of the, some of the behavior of some of these people, we are not looked upon as uh, somebody as trustworthy. Uh, you know what people say about lawyers? And they are sharks, and um, and I have the unfortunate uh, situation where sometimes when, when I was practicing law, um, I meet with people, uh, and then uh, when I introduce myself, I said, uh, when they ask me, what do you do? I said, uh, you know, I'm a lawyer. But sometimes, you know, those people can't pronounce English properly, and they say, oh, I, I know, you're a liar. 
said, gosh. <laughs> and also as a politician, you know, I was also unfortunate because when, um, when I meet people and um, they told me, uh, they spoke to me, and then uh, they would say, you know, I, I'm a person who's very direct. I don't like to sugarcoat. And you say as it is. And uh, many occasions, because of the behavior of politicians, I, I think you know what politicians are like. So they say, they say to me, you know, uh, Minister, I know you're a politician, but let me tell you, yeah, most of them told me, the only time I believe you and the only time I think a politician is telling the truth is when he says another politician is a liar. <laughs> so, but thank God, I'm a diplomat now. I'm no longer a, law, a liar, they say. I'm, you know, uh, I'm no longer a politician. I've sort of uh, cleansed myself now, and uh, and uh, I'm, 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 you know, uh, I can, I can uh, sign your code of honor, yeah, uh, as I'm, <laughs> and I can participate in your activities because I know BYU is a very good university, and uh, to be in this university, there's a code of honor. Uh, which you have to sign, and uh, I'm, I'm very happy about all the positive that I hear from BYU. And um, I, I've intended to to uh, to meet again with your uh, leadership, uh, so that I can bring in more students uh, from Malaysia, which today stand at only maybe four or five students. And uh, this is something which I would like to see as ambassador of uh, Malaysia, United States, I want to see more students coming uh, to BYU. That would be my bucket list uh, to promote your university in my country. As I've said earlier, uh, I have got speech before me uh, because I'm always reminded by uh, my wife's advice to me. Uh, he said, uh, darling, he said, uh, my wife is here. Um, she, she told me, she said, uh, remember, I know you've been a politician uh, for more than 30 years, but uh, you have to remember that you are now a diplomat, you're an ambassador. I say, yes, I know that. So, that when you do speeches in any event, do not speak off the cuff. <laughs> uh, that's what she told me. Because, because she said, I know how you speak. <laughs> you know, when you were a politician, you were very vocal, and uh, she said, I worry then when you become ambassador in the United States, instead of uh, having good relations with the U.S., your off-the-cuff speech may turn the U.S. into our enemy. Uh, so I say, okay, darling, I, I promise you I'm ambassador. Uh, I'm going to read my speech. I think it's very important that uh, I deliver my speech now because most important when you speak is that people understand what you're talking about. Because you may speak for hours, but at the end of it, people do not understand. Then we just waited, uh, wasted one hour. So I'm going to talk about Malaysia. And as mentioned earlier, I will take any questions. No holds barred. Uh, I think the best way to learn about my country is to really, you know, you ask any questions at all. I come from a country which is uh, considered to be third world. Uh, you know, the politicians uh, there are well protected. And, um, and then uh, when we have uh, uh, the, the security will protect us, and when there, there is Q&A, the, 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 the security will stand behind me and just watch at you. And uh, the first thing they say, when you ask questions, give me your name and where are you from? Who's going to ask you that question, you know? Because uh, if you ask any sensitive question, they take, their take your names. So with me, in America, a land of democracy, freedom of speech, freedom of expression, you can ask anything at all. You are not in Malaysia. I can assure you, we will not take your names, okay? <laughs> so, okay, uh, I'm, I'm being honest. I'm being honest, uh, the world that we come from, they're used to this. You know, the, the, the security will control the environment, control the meeting, and will not allow uh, anyone at all to, to, say, to ask or say anything which may offend the ministers, whom the people elected. That's the irony of uh, some of uh, our politics in the third world. 
So I read my speech. Uh, thank you for the uh, introduction. Uh, Mr. Jeff Ringer, uh, Vice President of the Brigham Young University, uh, members of the faculty, academic staff, and more important, most important, the students of the David M. Kennedy Center for International Studies. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in my uh, country, uh, being a Muslim majority country, we say, Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullah wa Barakatuh. Nothing so serious about this, uh, you know, salutation. It's just say, peace be upon you. That's all. And a very good afternoon. Now, uh, allow me to express my heartfelt appreciation to Mr. Shane Reeves, the president of Brigham Young University, for the very kind uh, invitation that he extended to me, uh, to my family, my wife, Aflin, please stand up. Say hello to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. And of course, my dear son, Jean-Pierre Aziz, there he is, a future diplomat and uh, politician. <laughs> uh, and also to the officer of my embassy of Malaysia, Mr. Arif, who's my second secretary, we sat uh, together to, to, to prepare this speech. I'm sincerely thankful for this warm reception. It has always been warm from the very beginning that I arrived here until now, and I'm very sure until tomorrow when I leave for Washington, D.C. There is no difference between Americans and the, the Asian people. We are all warm. Uh, we are friendly. We are, you know, understanding. We are very compassion, compassionate. So actually, to say that probably the Americans are, you know, uh, very rough, uh, cowboys. Yeah, they may be cowboys, <laughs> which we watch on TV, you know, on in the movie. And I love cowboys. I love cowboys. I mean, I, I like the rugged life and all that. But on a person-to-person -person basis, there is no difference. You are just as warm. You are just as friendly. And uh, you are just as uh, compassionate. And uh, you are very hospitable. You know, I feel uh, very, very welcome. Wherever I go, not just in BYU, in uh, Salt Lake City, in Washington, in uh, Memphis, in New York, just name it. And, uh, you know, it's a set everywhere, which means that generally, generally, Americans are good people, and you should be proud of this. And, you know, you come from a big nation, and uh, by just being good to us, you know, uh, we will run miles to come to you. That's how uh, I'm from Malaysia, a small nation, I feel, that's how I feel towards the American, because I've been here the first time uh, back in 1984. Uh, don't try to gauge how old I am now. I'm young. Well, I've been here since 1984, before some of you were born, I think. <laughs> I've been here, and uh, it, it is the same. The welcoming and everything is the same. So I, I, I can say that this is, you know, being warm, friendly, hospitable, it's typically American, and thank you for it. Yeah? Um, it is truly an honor to be here today, uh, standing before you to share insights about my country. Malaysia, I believe uh, that understanding a country's history and culture is key to truly knowing and appreciating it. We have a saying in uh, Malaysia, uh, to know a person, to love the person. I've come to know uh, America, and I want you to know my family, my wife and I, and myself, we love Americans. You know, you make us feel so comfortable. And the, as the ambassador of Malaysia to the United States of America, it is my duty to ensure that the relations between Malaysia and the United States remain robust and on a good state. Now, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Malaysia is a small trading nation uh, situated in the heart of the fast-progressing Southeast Asian region. We are surrounded by 
nine ASEAN uh, neighbors. ASEAN meaning Association of Southeast Asian Nations. There's a difference between Asian and ASEAN. So we are ASEAN, okay, so that you know. Now, our neighbors are uh, Brunei, Darussalam, which is on the Borneo uh, Island, and uh, Cambodia, Laos, Indonesia, uh, Myanmar, the Philippines, Singapore, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, to provide some perspective, Malaysia is nearly 30 times smaller. Uh, you expected me to say bigger, eh? No. 30 times uh, smaller than the United States. It may akin to the size of New Mexico. As of today, our population stands at about uh, 35 million, 10% uh, of the uh, United States population, comprising various ethnic groups. We have three main races in uh, Malaysia, which are Malay, like me, uh, which uh, maybe in the in, in, in U.S., you will uh, put me under native Indians, and I have a native Malaysian. Then we have Chinese and we have Indian. And in addition to these three major ethnic groups, there are also various indigenous groups, collectively known as Orang Asli, who have their distinct languages, cultures, and traditions. Malaysia, uh, or formerly known as Malaya, gained its independence in August 1957, specifically 31st of August 1957, a very young country compared to the United States, uh, who are now more than 200 years old. Uh, we are just 60, 66 probably, and uh, we were colonized by the British. Uh, the British began establishing their presence in the late uh, 18th century, now gradually expanding their control over different parts of what is now Malaysia. And during the World War, World War II, uh, Malaysia was occupied uh, by the Japanese. And after the war, it then faced a significant security threat from communist uh, insurgencies. The British resumed control until Malaysia gained independence in 1957, marking this year the 67th year of our independence. Our federal constitution underlines Islam as the religion of Malaysia while guaranteeing the freedom of other religions to be practiced harmoniously in any part of Malaysia. There's no persecution of uh, any other religion in the country. The king of Malaysia is the head of the religion of Islam in the country. The position of Islam in Malaysia's uh, legal and political framework is uh, reflected in various aspects of the country's governance, including the legal system, education, and the monarchy. Now, Malaysia follows a dual legal system with Islamic law uh, governing certain aspects of uh, personal and uh, family matters for Muslim. I'm a Muslim, my wife is Muslim, and uh, when we get married, we don't need to, to, to register, but we go, through the, we go to the Islamic courts and all that and we are married. Uh, but of course, for those who are not Muslim, they, they just register. Uh, a girl loves another man, and they decide to marry, and they just, you know, go to the registry and just uh, register. And after that, they can have their own ceremony uh, according to their own uh, faith and belief. Yeah? For the Chinese in Malaysia, after the registration, they have what they call the tea ceremony. By the, you know, they will give tea, uh, cup of tea, uh, the young man to the future, in, uh, to the in-laws, and also uh, the girl will serve the man first, and then will serve the parents of the man. It's just uh, traditional, but anybody can get married anywhere, uh, as long as I think uh, they are above uh, 16, yeah, above 16 or 18 probably, yeah. Now, uh, we don't uh, agree with child uh, marriage. It may, it may happen uh, uh, sometime in you know, a uh, remote part of uh, Malaysia, but it's not looked upon kindly uh, by us as a society and also by the government. Now, um, 
Malaysia, um, Malaysia practices uh, parliamentary democracy uh, with constitutional monarchy, which was modeled and is modeled uh, on the British Westminster system, which means that we have a constituency and uh, we have elections uh, to choose to elect your member of parliament. One member of parliament uh, will uh, elect one person as an MP. And we have 222 parliamentary seats, and our election is always uh, uh, five years. A term will be five years. But election can be called any time uh, with, uh, with the advice uh, uh, given by Prime Minister to the King. Uh, uh, parliament can be dissolved at any time, and uh, it will be held. But the term cannot exceed five years. After five years, according to our constitution, the parliament automatically dissolved. As mentioned earlier, uh, I'm a, I was a member of parliament uh, for six uh, terms, which means that I contested six times. Yeah? And uh, I won every election consecutively. Uh, I decided I cannot go and on and on because uh, probably when I reach 100, I will still be an MP. So, no, no way, no way, yeah. My son is too young, uh, he needs me, so I need to stop. I, so, in the last election, I, I told my party that, you know, uh, I was not going to contest. Uh, we had a new candidate, but unfortunately, because it wasn't me, we lost the seat. Yeah, now there's pressure for me to go back next term, but this, I think, I have to really sit down with my wife, talk to her properly, whether when I finish my term, I will go back and contest as a member of parliament. It's just uh, a saying, okay? It's not something I decided. <laughs> it's not something I decided. Uh, so <laughs> we'll, uh, probably we don't even discuss this. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, we're, we have a constitutional monarchy. Uh, okay, uh, that's finished. Uh, the head of state, the head of state uh, here is the president. Uh, in Malaysia, we call the king. Uh, the king in the Malaysian term is the young Dipotuan Agong. Agong actually is the uh, biggest, highest. So young Dipotuan means uh, our lord. Yeah? Uh, so uh, the highest lord are the, I mean, in, in, on the land is the king. Now who takes turn uh, every five years among the nine Malay rulers of the individual state? We have 14 states of which uh, five, uh, they've got governors, uh, they were settlements, uh, British settlement, and uh, when we became independent, uh, you know, they, they don't have king, we actually have governors. So, but there are nine states, which for maybe 200 years or 250 years, 300 years, they've had their own uh, rulers, we call the sultan. So this sultan, nine of them, will rotate. Uh, every five years to become uh, the king. So there's no election actually for them. It's just that among themselves, they sit down and they rotate according to the states. Yeah? So we just had a new king, uh, I think, installed uh, early, uh, uh, early in January or some, sometime in January. So he's a new king. He will serve for five years. And uh, I can't remember what number he is now, but he's, he's, I'm sure he's more than uh, 15 now. Yeah, and uh, each of the Malay states, and they have their own rulers, and uh, they are hereditary ruler. Uh, they are actually more uh, traditional, more historical, and uh, you know because they are part of our culture and tradition. Uh, we keep them, and sometimes uh, you know I was formerly minister of tourism. Uh, sometimes they are tourism. Uh, you know, uh, item for us, yeah. They have uh, their palace, uh, they have the, um, uh, you know, their, their office, and uh, it is something to talk about uh, when you come to Malaysia. So, the conference rulers, uh, which consists of the nine Malay rulers, uh, they will meet to elect the next uh, king from among themselves. All right. Now, the head of government in Malaysia is the prime minister, the executive head. Uh, the Prime Minister is the leader of the executive branch, elected uh, every five years through the general elections. I think we've had our 
15 uh, general elections uh, in 2022, and we are due to have the next one in 2027. I think uh, in time for me to finish my tour of duty here, and maybe in time to contest the next election. I, I was just joking. All right. She's listening. <laughs> All right. I was just joking. Um, <laughs> in 2022, Malaysia held its 15 general election, resulting in uh, Mr. Anwar Ibrahim uh, becoming the Prime Minister. Now, his vision outlined in the Madani Framework and Economic uh, Roadmap to the Madani Economic Framework. Madani is just an Arabic term for, you know, civilized, proper, that's all. Uh, nothing, uh, no religious connotation to it. It's just that uh, sometimes we use English, sometimes we use uh, French, and, and, you know, uh, Madani framework is just to say that, you know, this is a, a civilized uh, framework that we have for our economic roadmap, uh, and uh, it aligns with Malaysia's priorities on the international stage. Now, Malaysia Madani is a vision built on the pillars of core values that we, have, that we believe are indispensable in any harmonious, thriving, and peaceful society. Just like the, the, the honor code of BYU, uh, what are the five pillars? Compassion, respect, trust, innovation, prosperity, and uh, sustainability. Now, these basic principles and moral values also apply in the context of our relations with other countries. That's why you are, BYU is relevant to us. Yeah? Now, as the ambassador of Malaysia, my main role is to be a bridge uh, between uh, Malaysia and the United States. Now, thank God, Malaysia and the United States, uh, we are quite far apart. So there's no possibility of building physical bridge to Malaysia. It only means that they have to send me here to be the bridge. I intend to be the bridge for some time. Eh? So I'm, I'm lucky. I'm the bridge now, uh, enhancing and increasing various uh, relations between the two countries. Malaysia remains dedicated to aligning uh, pr uh, priorities with the international community, which includes the United States, focusing on uh, climate change, sustainability, uh, digital transformation, renewable energy, and green technology. Now, ladies and gentlemen, our relation with the United States can be traced back to as early as in the 1800s. Uh, you were cowboys here, yeah? and we were living in the jungle then, yeah? Uh, <laughs> but we managed to, to, to get to know each other. And uh, it became significantly important when Malaysia gained uh, its independence in 1957. Now, the United States was among the first nations to recognize Malaysia as an independent country. Now, it is a gesture which we deeply appreciate. When we became independent in seven, those were the years of, you know, uh, uh, volatile uh, incursion. There are some people who are happy that, you know, uh, the countries want to become independent. Uh, like for us, you know, part of the world, the communists, uh, they, they don't want us to become independent. And, you know, they try to stop us becoming independent. And uh, we fought them. Uh, at the border between uh, Malaysia and Thailand. It wasn't an easy uh, fight for independence. We were not fighting the British. We were fighting the communists. Yeah? It's ideo ideological differences. Uh, we are not communists. I don't believe in communism, I'm sorry. You know, uh, I believe in God. There's one God which we all believe in, in BYU. So I'm not a communist. And we are actually, to be honest with you, hardcore anti-communists because we don't believe in their ideology, because we believe in God, right? Uh, we believe in the equality of uh, people, but not the way that the communists want us to be, which you know eventually will, uh, what will happen, as in the book, in the novel Animal Farm, there will be somebody who is more privileged than the other, right? In this book, it's the pigs. I happen to be a horse in the Chinese zodiac, so, you know, I don't want Animal Farm. They go, they work. They, they made me work. And uh, by the time I, I, I reach the age where I cannot work anymore, you know what will happen to me? They'll turn me into glue. <laughs> yeah, you read. Horses are being turned into glue. Yeah, I want to be a glue when I'm alive. 
bring people together, not being a glue of them dead. So I'm not, I'm really anti-communist. I don't like what they want to do. And I'm not ashamed to, to say that, you know, I believe in uh, social, I mean, in uh, equality. I believe in human rights, equality and all that, yeah? Now, uh, firstly, uh, now let us delve into the economic dimension of uh, Malaysia United States relationship is very important. You all need to know because some of you who may like our country, Malaysia, you may want to go back and work there. It is important that you know uh, we have a good relationship in terms of uh, trade investment so that uh, you can work in Malaysia. And there are many Americans who are working in Malaysia in uh, American uh, you know, uh, transnational companies. We have Intel, Texas Instruments, uh, Conoco Phillips, uh, many, many companies, yeah? So now in 2023, the total trade uh, between Malaysia and the United States amounted to USD 54.82 billion, 54.82 billion, not million, billion USD, yeah? And our major exports to the US include uh, electrical and uh, electronic products, optical and scientific equipment, wood products, and machinery. Our major imports uh, from the United States uh, comprise electrical and electronic products, transport equipment, machinery, chemicals, and uh, manufacturers of metal. United States stands as the third uh, largest uh, foreign uh, investor in uh, Malaysia's uh, manufacturing sector, uh, contributing uh, USD 25.98 billion USD to the country, creating over 196,000 jobs, job opportunities. And uh, if there are more investment, there are more opportunities for BYU graduates to work in Malaysia. You're most welcome. Yeah? Uh, we, I, I'll, I'll, inshallah, I say, God willing, I will make this happen because yeah? I want more Americans to come to my country. There are more than uh, 600 U.S. companies, 600 U.S. companies operating in Malaysia across various sectors. Uh, I can give you the detail because maybe some of you would like to find out uh, what, which companies they are. And you may want to apply to, to work. And if you need any uh, supporting letter from the ambassador, I'm ever willing. You can always ask uh, Maury. Uh, she's a good friend of mine, a good example of a typical uh, American folk. She was among the first American uh, that have met me, that met me when I came with my family, and we've been friends ever since. Good friends. Eh? Um, and also in the U.S., um, Malaysia has also increased it's investment. It's just not one way. Malaysian companies uh, are encouraged to, to, to invest in U.S. with 46 Malaysian companies uh, investing over USD 14 billion in diverse sectors, including entertainment. Uh, you know your neighbor, uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. Uh, Las Vegas, there's a casino, Gunting Casino. No, that is Malaysia. Now, I, I, I'm not uh, promoting gambling here in BYU. I'm just mentioning <laughs> one of you come. Okay, I, I'm not. I have to, 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 you know, to respect the honor code. But I'm told by some of your elders that, no, nah, it's okay, but it's not just here. I mean, uh, uh, you know, they are free to do what they want to do outside uh, BYU. Yeah, I think that's fair, huh? but not here. We are trained here. Yeah, we are trained to be good people here, like me, okay? Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, we have a resort, uh, uh, oleo, chemical, industrial packaging, uh, furniture, and banking. That's our investment here. Now, as we explore potential areas of investment, uh, Malaysia seeks to expand its footprint in the U.S. pharmaceutical industry high technology sectors, uh, e-commerce, uh, and as an alternative uh, manufacturing hub. 
our strategic location, uh, robust uh, electrical and electronic hub, along with a skilled talent pool, English speaking, uh, position Malaysia as an ideal uh, destination for U.S. companies looking set up, looking to set up operation. And of course, there's a rule of law. I was Minister of Law for nine years. Uh, it was my duty to ensure that you know your investment uh, will be protected, and there will be no such thing as you know nationalizing uh, your 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 plan or anything like that. It is uh, your in, uh, you know we have we have uh, Maeda, which is Malaysian uh, Industrial and Development Authority. Uh, this is an agency uh, which uh, will uh, facilitate uh, your uh, investment in Malaysia and they will provide, uh, under their laws, protection for any investment, uh, foreign investment in our country. Right? You can have a look at the law. You don't like it, don't come. But I'm very sure you're going to like it. Yeah? We are very, uh, uh, we ensure this uh, conducive uh, environment and climate for foreign investors, which are very important to us. Uh, furthermore, Malaysia plays a crucial role in the global semiconductor industry. We have 7% of total global semiconductor trade flowing through our country. I came from uh, uh, Salt Lake City this morning, and I was kindly showed uh, what you call the Silicon Slope, right? Uh, Silicon Valley is in California. I want now to talk about Silicon Slope. Uh, so we have our Silicon Slope here. And uh, Malaysia is, uh, uh, cons you know, we compute 7% of the global semiconductor trade flowing to our country. And you know who's number one? Taiwan. Taiwan's number one. I think more than 35% of the world's uh, trade in semiconductor. And we are second. Uh, we are 7%. The rest are maybe, you know, 3 4% each. But we are a global player in this. And uh, the U.S. and Malaysia have recognized the importance of semiconductor supply chain resilience, uh, leading to the signing of the Memorandum of Cooperation on Semiconductor Supply Chain Resilience in May 2022. Uh, we have signed this cooperation. And when we sign this cooperation, it means that we take into interest, uh, your, we, take in, we take into consider, consideration your interest, your investment. It must be protected. Every investor, before they come in, they want to ensure that when they invest their money, their money is protected. And that's very important. Um, this um, initiative aims to strengthen cooperation and uh, address supply chain shortages uh, during crises or pandemics. In the realm of uh, defense, Malaysia and the U.S. have uh, cultivated positive uh, relations since 1984. Uh, the military-to-military uh, -military channel of communication uh, established during the first meeting between our then Prime Minister and the U.S. Secretary of Defense has facilitated consultations between our armed forces. Uh, through the International Military Education Training, EMAT, and various other programs, the U.S. has provided valuable training to the Malaysians, uh, Malaysian Armed Forces and civilian officers. Now, this is very important to us. You know what it means? It means that the United States of America trusts us. Trusts us enough to sell us all the military equipment. You don't sell your military equipment to your enemies. or Not enemies, but your rival. So by agreeing and by signing uh, some agreement and having, uh, you know, uh, this uh, international military education training, it means that United States trusts us, and that is very important to us. This is our message to you, that you don't have to worry about us. We are your good friend. We are your ally. We have been for so many years. There is no need to question our loyalty, our friendship with United States of America. Because you trust us. That's why you are willing to sell jet fighters to us. You are willing to sell military equipment. And you are prepared to do joint exercises, military exercises. Which means that, you know, you trust us. Because you never all do all these things 
if you don't trust a country. So thank you very much, America. And if your government has no suspicion or doubt about us, I don't think any one of you should feel that, you know, you cannot be our friends. We will always be your friends. Now, um, education, uh, this is more very important, serve as another uh, cornerstone of our bilateral ties. Uh, Malaysia and the U.S. have collaborated extensively in the field of education, uh, ranging from formal agreements between public universities to people-to-people -people exchanges. A total of 14 uh, Malaysian public universities have signed 102 MOUs and MOAs with various education institutions in the U.S. for joint collaborative activities in diverse uh, areas. Now, these include exchanges of expertise, uh, research projects, and academic knowledge enrichment. The uh, United States um, alumni students who have studied here uh, and now in Malaysia uh, comes up to 250,000. And we have been sending students, excellent students, good students, to come and study here, study here since 1960s. So, and uh, just to let you know, only last year, the Macy Malaysian American Cultural Exchange uh, Program, something like that, we celebrated our 60th anniversary last year, and it was celebrated in our embassy. So it's been, you know, we have had long connections. I am not a, a United States alumni. I'm not an American alumni. I'm a British alumni because I studied law in uh, Lincoln's in London uh, a few years ago. And, uh, but even though I'm not uh, American alumni, I believe in promoting uh, education and good relations between uh, Malaysia and the United States. Now, the, the, the Fulbright English Teaching Assistance program, despite facing challenges due to the COVID-19 pandemic, is set for potential resumption. We need to resume this. Additionally, Malaysia's uh, EduCity Iskandar Malaysia, established in 2008, offers opportunities for American universities to provide high-quality educational services in the ASEAN market. Now, people-to-people -people exchange, such as the Kennedy Luger Youth Exchange and Studies, uh, program, uh, we're finishing, yeah? I know. I always get this all the time. When you get a mic, you get a mic to an uh, ex-politician, it's bound to happen, okay? It's bound to happen. So I just want, <laughs> I just want to, 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 to say last few words. Um, now, I just want, I want to mention the uh, people to people exchange. It's very important uh, because you are sending missionaries to Malaysia. Uh, to foster understanding and cooperation among our youth. Now, these programs contribute to the development of emerging <laughs> leaders and uh, strengthen the bonds between our nations. Uh, I will be giving my speech uh, uh, to you, uh, and uh, the rest of the speech, you can uh, read it. Yeah? Uh, I think it's more important for me that uh, I'll have a few exchanges, uh, questions with you, and uh, lastly, uh, I wish to conclude my speech, uh, you know, by inviting comments. I, uh, there must be something uh, you, you need to ask me. So I would like to once again thank you, uh, the BYU, for affording me the opportunity to speak about Malaysia uh, in this prestigious state of Utah. And I wish to continue to do this in other states as well. As the Ambassador of Malaysia to the United States, it is my desire to continue uh, working together towards strengthening the bonds of friendship and collaborations, uh, not only with the United States, but also with the global community at large. Thank you. Terima kasih. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Uh, we will take a, a, a few questions. Uh, if you do need to leave and um, go to a, a noon class, please feel free to do so now. Uh, because we have very limited time, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, we'll just take a few questions before the ambassador responds. So with your permission, Mr. Ambassador, uh, we ask you to try to listen to the, the several questions 
and then we'll give you a couple of minutes to respond, okay? Uh, if you do have a question, if you wouldn't mind standing up, uh, just raise your hand. We, we'll bring a microphone to you. Um, you can uh, tell us what you're studying here at BYU, and uh, we will end in uh, a few minutes. Questions? So I'm Stefan, studying family studies at BYU. And um, my question is, what is Malaysia's stance on ter territorial fishing and other disputes in the South China Sea? Thank you. Let's take a few more questions before we answer. In the back. Hi there. My name is Joseph. I'm studying music at BYU. Um, my question is, what's the relationship like between West and East Malaysia? And I also a second fun question. What's your favorite hawker center food? <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name is Conrad. I'm studying psychology. Um, I'm wondering uh, what Malaysia specifically is doing within its own country to promote equality between the, the varying uh, ethnicity groups. Thank you. Is there another one more question? Ben Beckstrom, Political Science. What would you say is Malaysia's biggest current security uh, issue or concern, um, whether regionally or globally? All right. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, we'll give you a few minutes to share what you'd like. Uh, we're on a schedule to get you to your next appointment, so we invite you to uh, take a few minutes. Thank you. Uh, first, the uh, South China Sea. And you know, uh, the threat is not just to Malaysia, but as you rightly said, it's uh, South Asia, the Philippines, uh, Brunei, uh, Indonesia, Vietnam. These are the main uh, countries that uh, have got territorial dispute uh, with China. But let me tell you something. Nobody, no country will tolerate yeah, any uh, claim of their territory by any other country. So you can understand how our stand is in this matter. Uh, the only country uh, in that area, uh, in that area, yeah, the, which is uh, uh, claiming our land is China. Now, I just want to ask you, I mean, uh, you, have, uh, you have land in, uh, in your own, uh, own uh, area where you live. Do you look kindly at uh, people who's claiming your land? Surely not, yeah? So uh, the, the question is very simple. We won't tolerate. We will not tolerate. And our friendship cannot be uh, at the best if you claim our land. That's absurd. And to claim our land on the basis that the sea uh, is named South China Sea, so you have a claim on an island which is just a few nautical miles from Malaysia, I think that's ridiculous. If you're a big nation and you want to be a powerful nation, you don't bully your neighbors. You don't do that. You know, uh, no, I, we, we just don't tolerate that. You know, in, we have what we call the, in, in ASEAN, a uh, zone of peace, freedom, and neutrality. We must respect the uh, sovereignty of a country over land which belong to them for years. Now, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, amongst other things, my country, we have decided that we should go to uh, Den Haag, the ICJ, and let the court, world court decide uh, whether uh, this uh, land belongs to China or not. I mean, the last southernmost island, Hainan, is thousands of nautical miles from the disputed, uh, not disputed, they claim it, whereas it's only a few nautical miles. I, I don't look kindly at this. And uh, I can t you can more or less, by looking at me, you can guess how unhappy, how angry I am that, you know, they are claiming our land. So uh, this is a zone of peace, freedom, uh, and neutrality. 
and uh, we among the nations uh, involved in this disputed or what they call uh, territories, we are all together with one voice that we don't tolerate this and we will not allow this. And I've spoken to my ASEAN ambassadors, uh, countries uh, which are involved uh, in this uh, disputed claim, um, that you know we should stand together and we should have a common uh, you know intention, and that is that we go to court. How better uh, to, to to resolve issues? We've done this with our neighbours, with Singapore. There are disputed islands with Indonesia, and we, you know, what uh, what has been decided by the court, uh, the process allows for you to appeal. We appeal, and finally, if the court of appeal they say no, that's the final decision. We abide by this. So, uh, and uh, and we know it's a false claim. Not only false, it's fake claim. Yeah, uh, one day they come out with a nine dash line. Next day, uh, recently, they came up with a 10-dash line. What does it mean? It means that they don't even know where their boundary is. If you are so sure that this is your territory, you need only to have, you know, one, uh, you know, 9-dash uh, line. That's the, that's the area where, you know, uh, uh, China says that, you know, anything uh, within that, that, you know, that's theirs. Yeah, but now it has come to 10-dash. Ten dash line. One, two, three, four, five, ten. From nine to ten, what does it mean? It means that they themselves are not sure where their territory ends. So definitely for me, uh, you know, it's a fake claim, it's a false claim, and uh, we will not allow China to claim our territory. We can, tell, we can assure you that. Yeah? We will not allow it. So that's our stand. Uh, individually as a country and also as a uh, grouping. Of course, we understand our friends like, you know, Cambodia, Laos, they may have different, uh, they are neutral about this, they are not saying yes or no, but we understand because uh, China is a big neighbour and that's okay. But they don't oppose to what uh, we want to do. So to answer your question, that is uh, our stand. Uh, we will not allow this. Uh, we are willing to go to a world court to decide on the ownership of these territories. Uh, number two, hawker food. Oh, hawker food, uh, I, I don't want to say anything about you. You got a flag, I mean, the name Malaysia there. I know you love Malaysia, but looking at your size, I know you like food. <laughs> anyway, to be honest, you go anywhere. You go to uh, Kuching, you go to Kinabalu. Uh, Ipo, Malacca, but I will recommend you two places, Penang and Malacca. The best. The trouble, you know, answering questions like this, I feel like flying home tomorrow, <laughs> thinking of the food. Eh? Yeah, uh, Penang. Penang, uh, uh, Ipo, Kuala Lumpur, and of course, Kuching. I think, uh, you know, in Kuching, you've been there, the Kolok Mi. Have you heard of that? Kolok Mi, yeah, I know, yeah. <laughs> I think you take it. And Mary, Mary, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're good. Uh, you know, don't go to the restaurant. The restaurant, they're all uh, trained chef. We want a natural chef, you know, no, yeah? Natural. Uh, the natural one. They don't have to go to school. But, you know, they have 13, 14 children in, in the family uh, eating on the cooking that the mother... Uh, these are the ones that we want, the ordinary... Uh, Chef. So, yes, Penang, Georgetown. We have a Georgetown also in Penang, not just Washington. Eh? <laughs> Georgetown and uh, also in, in uh, Ipoh yeah? and Malacca also. All good. Uh, we have, uh, you know, street, uh, street food, hawker street food, because uh, we are a warm country. And the weather is warm. We can eat outside. Yeah? Mm, so, yeah, that's it. Yeah, I remember the, the, the cities I told you. And then uh, ethnicity. Now, you know, uh, ethnicity is uh, it's not a problem, okay? Uh, since independence, 1957 until now, we've only had uh, one misunderstanding, yeah, uh, between the native and the, you know, uh, non-native. 
But there was only one, only one time in 1969. So we do have laws in Malaysia that sometimes it may be strange uh, to, to, to the West. Uh, the law is called um, Sedition Act. Sedition Act. Sedition Act means there are words that you cannot utter in public, in your speech. It's like an anti-hatred act. Yeah? Even, even here in the uh, in US you have. But we call it a sedition act. Any words which is seditious, uttered, mostly by politicians, mostly by politicians. You know, politicians, uh, if I look at the politicians here, I don't want to come to the US. You know, you look at Congress, you look at Senate, never-ending quarrel. And now I think it's more divisive. You can see more divisive. People vote, make decisions, not based on principle, but based on your you know, loyalty to your party, which is not good, which I have not seen in the U.S. during those days and all that. It's only recently. So uh, it's very worrying. To avoid things like this happening in Malaysia, that's why we have the Sedition Act. I, I just want you to give you an example. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Time to, find, to end. Okay, time to end. Yeah, we, 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 we have tools to prevent this. So uh, we can live, uh, uh, coexist peacefully together. Uh, there has not been any riot uh, or, you know, communal unrest in Malaysia since 1969. So speaks a lot about our, uh, you know, relationship uh, ethnic relationship Malaysia. And finally, uh, security concern, yes, thank God for the United States. Your presence uh, in, uh, in, in that area tells the whole story that we do have security concern. Before independence, we were fighting the communists, and they're still around, yeah? They're still around. But we ban uh, communist ideals in Malaysia. We don't allow it all. But you must understand that big communist countries are still around, so there is security concern. For as long as they are around, there will be security concern. And that's why we have all these uh, uh, you know, military exercises with U.S. Philippines will have their you know, uh, also uh, relationship with U.S. military and all that. So, yes, there is security concern. And you know which side we are on. Thank you.